Hello everyone. Today we're going to take a look at how a safety committee can be meaningful and successful and give you the information you need to really improve your safety committee meetings or even to start one. A safety committee is one of the most important elements in creating a great safety culture, but actually holding those meetings and then getting the group's enthusiasm up can be a pretty big challenge. So today we're going to take a look at why your safety committee might be failing. We'll show you some benefits of having a committee. And then we'll give you tips for a successful safety committee and some mistakes to avoid. We'll tell you how to get your employees involved and how to make your meetings fun, interactive, and most importantly, successful. So we know that there are a bunch of reasons why having a safety committee meeting is really important. Um, but some of them that you might not be aware of is that it can actually reduce the risk of injuries and illnesses. It informs and educates your employees, and it sets meaningful and attainable goals. It can have a really great positive impact on company safety culture. And last, it can actually save the company money through reduced workers' compensation costs, fewer lost work days, and increased productivity due to higher employee morale. So why might your safety committee meeting be failing? Well, one of the main reasons that safety committee meetings don't work, it comes down to the lack of a group focus. And not a lot of people are fans of meetings anyways, we all know this. And people would even ask, well, what do you need the safety committee to focus on other than safety? And yes, this needs to be the main focus, but you want to dive a little bit deeper and take it to the next level. Focus should be on specific work-related injuries within your organization. You can actually be the first to analyze every injury or near miss in your workplace at the safety committee. You know, one of the things here at Lancaster Safety that really amazed me since I've been here was the attention to detail on near misses. So even when our trainers in the field have a near miss, even the ones all over the United States, those are addressed in our safety committee meetings and we discuss how those situations can be avoided in the future. The second reason to focus on is encouraging your employees to express their concerns regarding injuries and near misses. And this actually points to the first element of VPP, which of course is the Voluntary Protection Program, and that's management, leadership, and employee involvement. Giving all of your employees a voice about safety is really important. It even helps them to buy in on the concept that safety really does come first. The third reason is taking the time to make corrective actions. And those actions may be difficult and may cost the company money, but it can also save someone's life and make sure they go home at the end of the day. And lastly, make sure you follow up on newly implemented procedures and policies. The follow-up ensures that the new policy is effective and you actually might find that it needs to be tweaked and adjusted to maximize efficiency. So some of the, the common mistakes that can hinder a safety committee's success, um, the biggest one is probably lack of communication. If you're not communicating as a safety committee, it makes it way more difficult to communicate with the rest of your organization, you know, what you're doing to improve safety. So from the planning process and organization to then executing the corrections and new ideas, communication has to be key to making the ideas happen. So two tips we can offer you. The first one is that meeting agendas should be well established and followed. And then you want to make sure that you require mandatory attendance for all members as well. Now speaking of your members, you want to make sure that all roles are clearly identified. And by defining those roles within the safety committee, that establishes what each employee is responsible for, so there's no confusion, everybody knows what their role is. And breaking the work into teams helps to eliminate overloading one person, and you want to make sure that you incorporate all levels of workers into each group. The next um, mistake that you definitely want to avoid is a lack of follow-up. So you want to hold your members accountable for their responsibilities. So if someone commits to accomplishing a task, you want to you know, give them a deadline to make sure these things do get accomplished. We're sometimes actually shocked by how little companies hear from their safety committees. And the last one is lack of management commitment. You want to have upper management buying in and participating in safety. That way it sets an example for the rest of the workforce. So a couple tips that we can offer for having a successful safety committee. Uh, that includes representatives from all levels of the company, from the CEO down to the newest employee. You also want to encourage input from all members, and you may actually be surprised with the feedback and ideas that team members may have. Lastly, successful safety committees set a consistent schedule for the meetings and have a structured agenda and establish short-term goals. That way everybody knows what their role is and what's going on for each meeting. So through all this, you want to choose to be a safety innovator. Now, this is way more than just delivering a quick safety talk. 
And I'm even going to share with you a really big secret that only the best leaders know. You have to make people feel like you care before they're going to care about what you're saying. And this is such a big necessity in order to effectively get your point across. Also, remember to be exciting, encouraging, get your members involved. So here's a couple fun ideas I want to share with you today. You can hold elections annually for certain leadership positions within the committee, and this allows just, you know, for changes to occur just to prevent complacency. You could come up with a safety slogan for the company, so you could have your members maybe submit some slogans that they like and have everybody vote. You can celebrate safety achievements of long-term goals with a company-wide event, and I know here at Lancaster we love to have food days, so we always use potlucks to celebrate, you know, any big achievements we might have. And last, you can create themed safety committees where members can be creative with dressing up or providing snacks. And it might sound a little bit cheesy, but I promise you it gets everyone involved and everybody has a lot of fun. Success takes time and hard work, but it starts with leadership. Above is a screenshot taken from our website, and I truly cannot say this enough. Safety is a journey. It does not happen overnight. So keep learning and working hard on your company's safety program. So if you've been listening in and thinking, well, I don't even have a formalized safety committee. How do I get one? How do I start one? We can help you. Did you know that some states even offer insurance discounts for having a formalized safety committee? So feel free to call us today at 888-403-6026 for more information. Thanks, and have a safe day.